scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. There are, when you know, see, listen, the weight on your head determines how you walk. If you are carrying a cup on your head, you can even leave it and walk around. If you are carrying a headpan, you can walk around. If you are carrying a destiny, the walk is so slippery, God must lead you on how to walk. This is what people do not understand. So this thing people generally call prayer is many things at many realms. That's why you see me encourage people. I, as I began to grow in the things of God, I found out that I cannot pray comfortably in the daytime my life at this level will not allow me to maximize prayer the distraction that will come from my phone ringing i don't off my phone whether i'm on pulpit or my phone is if my phone is off i'm either taking a flight or maybe something is done you see that i charge my phone an average of twice every day i have to because of you do you know living is not general the concept of living is dimensional. Listen to me. That means when you are tired of certain things, certain experiences around you, someone else is coming into that dimension. So you are not going to say, Lord, take away those things. Your job is to rise to the next dimension. Are we together now? Once upon a time, I remember those days, if there were 30 people and I was going to minister to them, I would have to lay hands on everybody one by one. It was very exhausting. And I said, God, there has to be a better way. Once upon a time, if God is talking to me and I see in the spirit that God wants to touch you, I will have to walk to you to touch you for that word to come to pass. That was... It was not what God could do. It was what my renewal and my alignment at that level could allow him to do. And I knew that if I continue that way, what if I have 30 minutes to preach and God wants to touch 500 people? I follow them one by one, touch somebody in overflow three, come back, touch this. How do you touch the people online? And then I said, God, there has to be a way. And he said, of course, there is a way. For I am a man under authority. And I say to one, go. And he goeth. That your words can become you. You don't have to move. Your presence can be poured into your words. You can send it on errand. Backed up by the anointing of the spirit. And it will produce the same effect. And I said, okay God. What does it take? Let's go. If you are interested now when you rise to that realm you will see it and then sometimes a new believer will sit down and be wondering wow how does this thing happen if the holy spirit shows me that he wants to touch someone in overflow three now you see all i need to do is not just to speak it or say it you see that you agree with god it looks simple until you are taught what really happens you come and collect the mic and talk. I will tell you when God wants to touch somebody, your job is to just say it. And you will be very surprised to see as if God doesn't love you. 
So most of this prayer, Lord, why did you disgrace me? I went to this meeting expecting the result of a realm. You went to the meeting with the expectation of a realm you have not entered. Because you saw somebody and you said, no, Abba, this must happen. Are we together? There are people who carry graces. As soon as they sit down and begin to talk, something about the realm and the dimension of God that they walk in will force you to pay attention. They don't have to say, keep quiet. No. There are realms where they say, oh yeah, keep quiet now. Praise God, everybody, listen. But there are realms where there are other provisions. Some spiritual arsenals have been provided that compel men to hear you. So you can see two men of God operating. Everybody's bringing his possibilities. Are we together? Yes. To believe that everybody is just generically carrying eternal life, carrying the Holy Spirit. You are right, but you are wrong. People come with their realms and the possibilities that come with those realms. Listen to me. And that means that if and when you are tired of what you are seeing and you do not like it, the Bible says, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? There is a hill. There is a level where you can rise to. Elijah was sitting uphill and he was able to see those who were coming. And he called down fire on them. He was sitting at an altitude. Physically, but that can also be symbolic of an altitude in the spirit. Papa Iya Deboe can just come and stand on this pulpit and just say thank you and speak and say, let me bless you. I declare that before the end of this week, you will be favored. Now he's speaking from a realm. You will say amen. It may not sound charismatic. It may not sound apostolic. Nobody falls. Nobody rises. But the nature of the spiritual provision that follows his grace will insist that that word comes to pass. Not because you believe it for the sake of the position he represents to the body so you see him not say well do you have there are realms where you say have faith press i'm sensing unbelief you are stopping this thing from happening truly there are dimensions where god does a thing not just for his name's sake he does it to honor the covenant he has with the vessels it's true that's why you can find somebody will come under a ministry and way before he starts learning how to tithe he will start receiving results of a tighter breakthrough open doors and when you meet him and say you are so successful teach me about success it will be the worst 30 minutes of your life he will vent ignorance from a to z and say why are you succeeding he said, well i don't know and truly he's right he doesn't know and if he makes a mistake to go out of that covering, in one week, everything will dry. Because that thing will come, his results will come back to look like his true realm. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? Yes. The animals did not want to be saved. They didn't know how to be saved. But they came under the covering of Noah's ark. It was built with food inside to sustain them. The animals would come out after the flood like heroes. But where they left alone, they would die. There are dimensions in the spirit. And there are realities. That means that if I want you to move to another dimension of results, then I must be able to guide you on the principles that will transit you from where you are to where you need to be there are destinies that no matter how you pray and fast at that level there are certain levels of the blessings of the lord that may never be made manifest your capacity at that level will not allow god bless you there is no need for that level of blessing at that level are we together? 
there are things you must be taught that means every time come look up please that means every time the word of god is coming to you it's not only edifying you listen very carefully it's not only informing you it's transiting you that means a possibility exists that you came here koinonia at a realm and by the time we're sharing the grace you think because you wore the same clothes you are the same person going out immediately you step out you will find out that the reality that followed you here is not the reality that went out with you many of you especially men of god come here and you just sit for one meeting and at the end of it sometimes you don't even get to see me and you are prayed for and that's it all you need to do is go back to your church or your fellowship and the first surprise is when you open your bible ah, ah, what is this again then you stand to pray and it will surprise you let me tell you another thing that will surprise you your worship team members that didn't follow you will start singing and you will think this is koinonia worship team you took something more than you back to your meeting are you seeing that remember you didn't call them to tell them look this is where i went to this is the grace i carried you went quietly but the nature of that grace is like a software it starts reprogramming everything around you to reflect the level you have now entered all of a sudden you find out that if you are someone who were not excellent for instance and you contacted that grace for excellence you come back with it you don't have to start teaching first you will find out that in a span of two months exceptionally excellent people will start coming to your platforms they were called there is a grace that calls them. They don't hear you because you are not yet at the level where they hear. There are ministries that no matter what branch you open, even if they open the branch close to a mosque, they must have excellent people. It's not like they bring people from the headquarters. The grace was designed to ransack the city and look for those who must make the anointing that is upon that level to walk, to come. There are cities where people hardly get land for church and for certain things. But there are ministries that enter with some graces. As soon as they enter, there must be vacancy. Suddenly somebody gets visa and is going abroad and he leaves his house. And they demolish that house and it becomes a church. The pressure that that grace puts on a territory until there are results. Please listen to what I'm telling you that means there is a grace you can carry that when you stand somewhere it becomes impossible for people to ignore you it's not you you have risen to a level that grace will begin to compel it will orchestrate a scenario that must bring you out no matter where you hide something must happen to the point that if God, if it's a grace at that level, God has mandated that at that level, any time you go, you must be seen and his grace must be acknowledged. So you are humble. And because you are in that place, God, that anointing can make somebody who has no business coming there, who knows you, to come there so that he can announce you and then leave. The grace on your life. There are dimensions of favor that you can enter into. Huh? that even if it's on a saturday night you speak over people they must be blessed even if it's sunday during service it's true it's true there are graces please listen to me there are dimensions you get to in the spirit that when you make certain spiritual utterances and say God said even if it's not God that said it because of the realm you occupy he will honor what you have said and rebuke you when you go back are we together that means it is possible for a man of God a prophet to come and see learn this a prophet can come and see that Shehu is supposed to be blessed October. That's what the revelation gave and is accurate. 
but I can come with a dimension. Listen carefully. Until a higher dimension comes, the highest grace that spoke is what works. But when a higher grace comes, I can make that October become tomorrow. I'm not a prophet. I came with a realm of intimacy and a covenant that I have with God. And I can look at him and say, my friend, um, something fell down and you gave me. Look at this. I bless you by tomorrow. And God will take what... It doesn't mean the prophet lied. It is the implication of the realm that was introduced. <laughs> Believers hear this and grow. So if you don't understand, you may go back and say, fake prophet, you prophesied nonsense. No, the prophet himself, even that office is in levels. A prophet in this realm is not greater than a Christian in this realm. The realm which is a reflection of his work with God must bow. Listen, the office that that man has, as powerful as it is, there is a realm of intimacy you can have with God that equals that office. You are not a prophet, but the level of dealing you have gotten with, your result is the same result a prophet will get. So when you stand side by side by, with a prophet, they will call two of you prophets. You are not a prophet. You have only transited to a realm where there is no difference between you and the result of a prophet or an apostle. These are deep mysteries in the kingdom that many people do not understand. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's powerful. That means if you truly want to be a blessing, more than office, more than titles, seek to be transitioned to a deep dimension of work with the Holy Spirit where there are results you will command that it looks like you are getting results from every office. A point will come, your members will not even know who you are. They said, this guy is a prophet, but are you really a prophet? This guy is an evangelist, but you are prophesying more than a prophet. And you say you are an evangelist. You say, God told me I'm an evangelist. You started as an evangelist. Your intimacy took you to the realm where only prophets should get to. And took you to a realm higher than that dimension. That means it is possible for a man of God you offend to curse you in anger. And truly it will happen. But a man of God will come who is not a prophet, not an apostle, not anything. But in a dimension of grace, he has been given the power. He will nullify that thing and say it is true. Based on this course, you should die tomorrow, but I hold your hands. God, look at him for my sake. Let it go. It's true. I'm looking for the best way I will help you understand this thing tonight. These are the dimensions that are at work in us. That certain things can happen to people because certain people are there. Are we together? Yes. All of these things you see are provisions that God put in place to ensure that the body continues to grow and that we continue to receive results. You can't believe that I've not even touched my message tonight. I just came with a hunger and a burden. Let's see what I can touch. I took the A part of what I want to share last week responding to the situation that we have that is widespread now. People getting frustrated as to whether the word of God produces results or not. Many of you have seen the rate of suicide and the rate of not armed robbery, not Boko Haram. These are people killing themselves now. A man leaves his family and then they are called that he died. Left a note, I'm tired of life and that's it. And young people also killing themselves. 
and those who are alive it's almost as if they are dead already depression teenagers having depression young people having high blood pressure all kinds of health related issues there is an answer i attempted to answer that question last week was it or the week before last that the reason the first reason that we looked at was because of the nature and the kind of mentorship and teaching are we together i stated that people have been taught that the value of their life is in the abundance of the physical things they get and so by the time you find out that you are unable to get a car and a house and a child and a husband and a wife and certain things at certain levels self-inflicted frustration begins to come listen carefully and as a result people become depressed you hear people saying as old as i am I, I don't have a child or i don't have a wife or i don't have a husband or i don't have my own house can you imagine at this age i'm still renting can you imagine this and that can you imagine at this age i have only three girls no boy you know and all of these kinds of things and i told us that it is because first the kinds of teachings please listen carefully the kinds of teachings that we have taught people we have taught people that spirituality and in many circles sadly that spirituality is only measured in the acquisition of physical things are we together so by the time i have by the time i have certain things for a prolonged period of time maybe a house a car and all of that i am perceived to not be growing spiritually are we together yes why do you still have this car after 10 years why are you still living here after 20 years so that pressure to do things to prove that the world is working when our, our expectations continually become disappointed then we are plunged into that state of depression are we together but then tonight's teaching also is an attempt to bring balance to it to help us understand it is important for us to get results and i want to talk um maybe just a few minutes our time is already spent on the fact that i believe that many people are unable to rise to the realms please listen the realms that will allow their lives reflect the faithfulness of god among many things because we have not learned thank you we have not learned that success is not something you pursue please say after me you do not pursue success you do not pursue greatness there is nobody who tries to pursue success or pursue greatness whether spiritually financially and otherwise that will ever have it it is not something you pursue please listen to me it is something that you draw it is attracted to your life on the strength of who you become and listen to me there are certain traits every blessed man every anointed man every influential man everyone that has been trusted with grace and influence will tell you listen there are a set of traits that individuals must possess you call it character you call it whatever it is there are belief systems say belief systems there are there are mindset conditionings that you must be able to have that will allow you to transit like i said earlier to the realms where these things effortlessly let me tell you this every time you struggle unnecessarily to get something stop immediately did you hear what i said every time you are struggling unnecessarily to get a thing stop immediately it may be proof that you have not acquired the spiritual the psychological and the spiritual maybe sometimes the intellectual stamina to bring that thing this is rainy season no farmer would go to the farm and have to labor so much to till the ground why because 
part of the provision of the rainy season is a system that softens the soil are we together now but if you try to till the ground by november december especially at this part of the country you're going to have a hard time so there are certain things we are trying to get is proof that although you are trying to reach out and it's running away from you is telling you something by running that you are not yet qualified for me so instead of running unnecessarily cut away and stay back and build the belief systems build the track record in the spirit that makes for that thing and i tell you whatever it is that left you will come to you and stick to you and refuse to go it is true for finances it is true for ministry it is true for leadership it is true for the anointing it is true for revelation it is true for anything i want to walk you through a few belief systems tonight maybe just two three and we'll pray since our time is gone that i believe is pivotal to our entering this new seasons that the lord has spoken to us about there are many of us who can sense in the spirit that i am at the edge i am i've exhausted my current level are we together now that financially spiritually and otherwise but let me limit it to our uh, the things that pertain unto life the things that matter to our life our upkeep our welfare and so on and so forth because that is what is causing the depression i don't think anyone will go and kill himself just because he doesn't know god he would rather fast he would rather pray he would rather buy books but when you are unable to pay the fees of your children, when you are unable to do well, when you are unable to take care of your parents and do all of that, the accumulated frustration can push you to a point. Do you know that in all fairness, I think in the last one or two weeks, I've gotten at least one text every day. People just calling and saying, Apostle, please you have to talk to me. Otherwise, I've been sensing, I've been hearing a voice say I should kill myself. I'm good for nothing repeatedly from different regions and then i knew that this this is terrible hearing voices getting frustrated feeling my life cannot you know my life would not make sense the the latest of the suicide issues i got to hear was a man a father who had a quarrel with his wife this is a true story some of you may have heard it a man who picked a quarrel with his wife and she took out time and blasted him and told him how irresponsible how shameless how disappointed she was in him how sad she felt that she got married to him and told him is it that his children were also disappointed and the last they said was that the man went out he just left and that was it they thought he was kidnapped they thought he was killed they didn't see him for a few days and they thought he was just you know men and their anger until police traced down and they found out that the man had died and they traced that the death was suicide now if you trace i'm not talking against church but if you trace that man will have to be associated with a group a church a fellowship or some kind of spiritual platform that means it is irresponsible for any man of god any spiritual leader to not at least respond to these things listen sociologically speaking men of god are also mind control systems men of god are also agents of transformation and much more than helping people to build their spiritual convictions we must pay attention to make sure that when there is an there is a psychological epidemic within a territory it is wise for every responsible man of God who has a sizable influence over people to contribute in making the people stay in a position that will not allow Satan to bring all of those kinds of predicaments. Are we together? Say, I need results in my life. It is true that results are not the basis of our confidence. It is true that results are not the object, not the motivation behind our pursuit of God and our walk in the faith. However, as I have said, I will continue to say again that results, among other things, are a system of consolation. Results are proof that you are adhering to spiritual laws. Results are also proof in many regards that God is with you. Not all the time, but many times. 
Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. How do we know? For no man can do these things. So when God is with you, there are some things, there are some evidences, attestations of his presence that must be there. And the Lord put it in my heart and I know by experience and by the privilege of mentorship from exceptionally successful people in the faith life, financially and so on and so forth, that there might be a few things we may be missing as believers or other things that we need to inculcate that can transit us to the levels that we seek to have the results that will make us at ease to know and believe that God is faithful. Are we together? So I want to share with us a few things that just take note of it. We'll just take three for the sake of time and then we'll pray tonight. Hallelujah. The first belief system that I want us to learn tonight that helps us to be great and helps us to transit well, look up please, is that all truly great people do not derive their confidence and their self-worth from the things that are outside them. Please listen. All great people do not derive their self-worth from the abundance of the external things that they have. Cars, houses, certificates, achievements, as powerful as all these things are. No truly great man, especially in the kingdom, derives his self-worth from the abundance of these things. That means that when I buy a new shoe, when I buy a new cloth, then I feel more successful. When the cloth spoils, I feel less successful. That's a terrible way to live. Are we together now? The Bible, um, I think that should be, I hope it's, uh, what scripture now? Is it Luke chapter 12? It just came to my spirit. Let's look at it. Luke chapter 12, I believe it is. Jesus was teaching Luke chapter 12. Yes, and verse 15. Give it to us please quickly. Luke chapter 12 and verse 15. Everyone please look up his projected. Here's what the Bible says. Jesus is teaching now. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of what? Covetousness. Greed. Greed. That's the word there. Greed. It says, for a man's life consisted not in the abundance of what? Things which he possesseth. That means the true value of your life and my life is not in cars, is not in houses. Are we together now? So you must bring yourself to a point where even though I'm trusting God for a car, a house, I'm trusting God for... Um, advanced certifications I'm trusting God to go abroad I'm trusting God to increase membership I'm trusting God to have children and so on and so forth my life cannot be and my sense of success cannot be defined by these things you know why? because these things vacillate they go up and they go down praise the Lord I was sharing, I think it was with our school of ministry students yesterday. And um, it started with the leaders during the leaders meeting. Um, I traveled to one of the states and my phone just fell into mud and water and it was just gone, just gone completely. And while they were still deciding for me what other phone I would buy to replace that one, I decided to take the old phone. Remember that my old phone that you people hate so much that you've done your best to make sure I throw away? You know, I dusted the whole thing and I got it back in shape. And then when I went for the leaders meeting, I could see the body language, all the leaders, oh, not again. You could see apostle, you've left this, you know, and all of that. And um, I used the opportunity to start sharing with them a bit of what I'm sharing with you now. Imagine that I tied my sense of self-worth to a, an exceptional phone. I will now begin to tell myself things that I think you are thinking. Ah, that means apostle's finances is going down. This one that he replaced this phone. Maybe he sold it all because he's broke. Because he's looking for something. Now remember you are not thinking that. It is a make-believe that has come as a result of my tying myself worth to phones. There are people who cannot leave their homes 
until they borrow certain things and wear. There are people who cannot, because they have created perceptions. There are men of God and women of God who cannot be themselves. More than half of their life is not them. It's a dangerous way to live. Listen very carefully. I show you a quick way to suicide. Tie your self-worth to things. And sooner or later you'll find out that you will need a knife, you will need a hoe, a cutlass, or a rope to kill yourself because of disappointed expectations. There are people who have tied their self-worth to the quality and the wealth of the kinds of families they have come from. So they will deny their parents because your mother is somewhere, maybe roasting corn or selling something by the road. And the impression that you have given people is that you are an exceptional Harvard type young man who most likely has spent a major part of his life abroad. And now they need to see your mother or your father. And based on your belief system, you think that looking at her and her state will will be a disadvantage to the perception you are proposing so you will call your mother your auntie say just one of our relatives that just came to stay with us it's, i mean even me i'm surprised now seeing her outside you think what i'm saying is silly except for the fact that it is true how many people will never be proud of even their homes where they live your family house Yes, I know that they use mud to build it. But the mud is not inside your mind. But simply because you don't want... We have a slang that our generation calls. They call it falling your hand. Correct? How will I take these people in my department? My departmental people want to greet my parents. How will I now take them to a house that is smelling the, the humidity even inside the house? The carpet, I mean everything. There are roaches flying around. I don't want to be associated with that. Less the person who wants to marry me, who has been perceiving that I'm a lady who was born inside an airplane, may now have to make up his mind and change his perception. Let me advise you and let me encourage you. I have a responsibility over you. Listen to me. If you tie your self-worth to anything outside you, get set for a shock in this life. Hallelujah. God forbid, but if any of my vehicles have break down and it's time for me to come for Koinonia, I would stop a bike outside quickly and say, Mr. Man, please take me. I'm late. And, and you know, members can rob this. They'll say, my apostle, the servant of the living God. You know, they, they will rob it in and make you say, bike, stop. Stop. <laughs> Let me just go back home. Tell them I'm not around. If you need things, to validate who you are you are in trouble because you will never have enough things that's why we seek to change forms listen let your motivation be a sincere desire to transit to a more effective version of yourself not that it is in the acquisition of these things that's why we are disappointed now i bought the phone now i i got the new hair now i got the clothes i got the designers i expected you to notice it and commend me and you ignored me so frustration starts are we together now did you not notice my perfume have you not noticed that i've changed perfume what is my business i'm thinking about my own destiny somewhere did you not notice i changed a car did you not notice i moved to a house have you not noticed that levels have changed I will never tie anything, my self-worth, to anything. No matter how great they are, I tell you the truth, they are mundane things. This teaching may not be popular, but it's the way of peace. It's not teaching you to be a mediocre. It's giving you rest. Rest. You've heard me say it again. Anything that is what's taking my life on, I put it inside me. God. Holy Spirit quality information anything that is too big to enter inside me is not worth my attention people's vehicles spoiled and they they were too embarrassed to go to work why because they say ah Ogasi or your car spoiled
my self-worth and your self-worth must be a derivative of who you are in Christ and what he has done and what you now possess so the first thing I'm advising you and listen to me koinonia I have a responsibility over you and over those who are following the mainstream mindset is to receive an applause because of things you bought a new watch how much is this watch 300,000 wow you are wearing a 300,000 watch that's somebody's salary for one year man you are not a small man no, and you enjoy it foolishly not knowing that that watch can be stolen it it can spoil it can leave you god can instruct you to sew it many things can happen around that watch why will you tie your self-worth and then you find out that you are no longer with the watch and then you are just looking someone may be noticing that i'm not wearing the watch uh, well let me just explain god asked me to, who asked you the, nobody is thinking about you as they are looking at you they are thinking about their problems Ah, where will I call my mother now? Oh God, let someone send me 400 naira recharge card. And you are there in a make-believe of your own manufacture. Say, I reject bondage. Shout it, I reject bondage. Ah, you used to you used to wear a hair of ten thousand before. What happened? I noticed you have started wearing the one of one one five and two. Is everything all right with your finance? What is your business? Does the one five oh not stay? Oh, please. I noticed you used to bab every two weeks, but in the last one week, I'm just a concerned brother. It's like a, you is that you don't have money. If you don't have money, use up just just clean it let it shine let it shine let it shine for god's sake don't be under pressure and say i must do this i must be this if you come to my house and meet me drinking gary i will only put it in a better cup if i honor you but gary you must drink i will not borrow money to buy minerals because of you no listen to me be healed of this societal pressure and let me tell all family people in Kononia, please hear me. Let nobody put pressure on you. Whether a minister, whether a leader, it should not be had in this ministry. That because anybody came to visit, they put pressure on you, you must fry plantain, fry chips. If you have it, praise God. If you don't, even if you don't have anything, put cold water in the fridge and serve. Do not derive self-worth. Don't expect people to treat you unusually just because you bought a new car. Just because you bought a new house. Um, just to let you know that levels have changed. Um, I got a job with NMPC and for starters, they gave me 1.5. And uh, because of that, I want to see Apostle. I don't have the time to join the queue. Can you please fast track the thing? I have a seed and the seed is a sizable one. What do you think I am? That's why it's good for a man of God to be blessed. Because when you are blessed, you are not looking at anybody's envelope and checking the size. No. No, we know man after the flesh. Please listen very carefully. Say in the name of Jesus, my confidence and my self-worth will never be on external things. It will be on who I am in Christ. And what Jesus has done in my life. So be proud of yourself and be proud of your level. If it's only one shoe you have, wear it every Friday. Wear it every Sunday. Let us see it as a testament. So that the day God blesses you, anybody who says it was a mistake, you will not be the one to answer. I'll say I was a witness. I saw that one shoe for two years while he was walking the world. Are we together? Sisters, don't let any brother come to you in the abundance of substance or things just to toy around with your mind and toy around with your life. 
say you know i'm this and that and that my father is a governor of which state what is your surname are the states in nigeria many that we don't know my father is a this my father is a king my mother is a this i'm a prince as you see i'm just a humble one no whether you are a prince or not that's not anybody's business people should honor you because of genuine character that you are a man of character that you are a woman of character is a nobler reason for honor than things number two ready <laughs> koinonia is growing praise the lord You must conquer greed. Write it down. The one cancer behind the, the restraint of God to bless many people. Greed. 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 You know, most people think rich people are the ones who are greedy. I tell you this sincerely. The reason why many poor people, poor Christians especially, who have an advantage of the Holy Spirit, if you have an advantage of the Holy Spirit and he's watching you poor, there's something you are doing to him. He is there as the advantage in your life. Greed. Many believers are greedy. It's shown in their givings. You started giving 10 naira as a student, as offering. And now you are director. You are giving 20 naira. Is that the measure of the lifting of God upon your life? No. Greed. Closely related to greed, please write. Selfishness. A selfish generation will never become an impactful generation. Please listen very carefully. Jesus Christ is speaking to us. A selfish generation will never become an impactful generation. What is selfishness? Look at this. Come, doctor. Selfishness and self-centeredness is when you desire something so bad, you do not care what effect it creates on others. Selfishness is not desiring good things. It is desiring good things to the point that you do not care what it does to others. That means that I so want to get to this speaker. I don't care if I match, um, I match and I put Dr. Emeka. I just want to reach there. There are many of us who are like that. Many Nigerians are like that. And I'm cautioning you because it's a spirit everywhere. It's like nobody cares about the effect of what they are, they are wanting to rise causes for others. I want to be a CEO. I will kill anybody if possible to be that CEO. Me, myself. The language of our generation is what is in it for me. Once there is nothing in it for you, it's not your business. No, it's not the language of great people. Great leaders, great leaders are selfless people. Great people are selfless people. The Bible says looking up to Jesus. Jesus did not come to the earth to pursue an agenda of himself. Please listen to me. I've taught us that it is about us but not all about us. When your life becomes all about you, then you are in trouble. This ministry was founded upon selflessness. Truly selflessness. Many of you as you are now, God is helping you. But you want to so grow and rise. There is none of our children here that is going to school because of your school fees. You are waiting till the day you become a millionaire. Some of them, their school fees is 2,000, 3,000, 10,000. You are so engrossed. You can package 100,000 and bring. Let me lay hands on you to climb the ladder fast. But a little child can come and hug you and say, Uncle, I'm not going to school. Well, let me join. Am I, your, am I your, your father? You see that? Selflessness. Selflessness. The selfishness in our world is so terrible. So terrible. 
people will do anything and not mind. They will, they will hit your car on the road because they want to hurry up. Break your, 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 what they call it, your side mirror and just hold you and say sorry. I see that's the solution to it. I'm in a hurry. To where? How about many of us here? You don't care if your siblings rise. Listen, you are not called to carry everybody's load in your life. But you are called to at least pay attention to the effect of what your rising is creating. You can't ignore everybody and your whole world is about you. Ladies, listen to me. Because you are the ones that are most hit with this mindset. It is always about me. My money is for me. My everything is for me. Someone can give you 2,000 naira recharge card as a seed. You will flash him to call you so you will say thank you. What do we call that? Greed and selfishness. Listen. Listen to me. Many of our parents today, many of our parents, respectfully speaking and with due honor to our elderly people here, many of our parents, this is what closed their door. They were so willing to succeed that they kicked every destiny helper out. And when they got to a place where they needed help, there was nobody to help them now. When they were in the civil service, some of them got to the echelon of their, their pursuit. They never raised anybody. All they were concerned about is me. I must sit down and eat. And now they've retired. No young person can come and say, Sir, in 1995, it was because of you I got a job. Today I've come with a seed to say thank you. Let me tell you, sincerely speaking, many of us here are young people, but let me tell you, if you are old, and nobody sees the need to take care of you and to say thank you is a sign that you spent your life in selfishness and greed are we together last year during my birthday the greatest gift that was given to me was a letter by my little children they write me letters all the time they write all kinds of things but i love their letters and i read every one of it they draw love, they write Jesus on it, they try to draw my face, they write, you have been a nice daddy, thank you. Those things mean a lot to me than chicken, than whatever it is. You eat those things and go to the toilet and it's all. But those things are a reflection. It's a sign that when you are old, those ones, they can come to you and say, make sure this person never cries, even in old age. You say, but it's not your father. He said he was better than my father. If nobody can remember you for good, it's a sign that you are digging the grave already, even while you are alive. Please hear me. Great people are not great because they are pursuing all they want. It's not all about you. Everything God gives you, people should rejoice with you because they know that by the grace of God and with all humility, even if it's the crumbs from the table, it will reach them. I look at us please look at me i can tell you why god has not answered your prayer of financial prosperity he has discerned the extent of greed that in your being blessed nobody nobody many of us are so greedy and selfish that anytime you are blessing somebody they know that you are looking for something whether you are looking for a life partner or you are looking for a destiny helper or you are looking for, for something, it is not you to give. I think if I stop giving, it may affect me. I may even fall down and die. But you know, Apostle, we are not very blessed. It's you people that God has helped. That is the talk of a greedy person. If you can't give clothes, there is food. One day you can make up your mind to cook two pots of food and call somebody and say, I may not do much now, but I am breaking the spirit of greed. Please come and eat in my house. They come the next day and say, no, no, no. I was only training myself. Don't come every day. Don't be ashamed of saying it because human beings will always take you for granted. You do it once and pursue them and don't feel bad. Tell them, please, at training, when, 
when I get to that realm, you will come. But for now, come and eat. Are we together? Say in the name of Jesus. The spirit of greed. The spirit of selfishness. I curse it from my life. Many believers are like that. Two women or two men can be talking. I can be talking with Dr. Emeka. And in his presence, I will bring out 2,000 naira. Buy egg roll and minerals. And hold it while we are talking. And finish it and eat the egg roll and squeeze the leather and match it. Hapa! It's inhuman to live like that. Giving is living. You must trust God for grace. Don't wait till you are a millionaire. I'm telling you, listen, this, these are belief systems that will make your life exceptional. God will never trust a greedy and a selfish person. When he sends a word to Jacob, it's because Jacob can let that word reach Israel. If God gives you money, can God look at many people in Koinonia today and say, instead of blessing five people and giving them school fees, I know they are coming, but can I bless you? And then they rejoice. The angels rejoice and say, these children have gone to school. Why? Because one person was blessed. What does it take for God to give you a job? What does it take for God to turn the economic tide in your life? It takes more than studying business. Let me tell you, it takes more than we've taught you a lot and you know that there are astute business people in this place. We're not just men of God. We're not daft people. We're economically sound. We're financially sound. But I tell you this, much more than just the value you give, who you are is higher than what you do. I had a conversation of recent with a very wealthy man, such a rare privilege, and I met him. And I asked him one question. I said, sir, let me ask you one question. I said, what kind of people will you be looking for at this level? And he looked at me and smiled and said, Apostle, you are very smart. I said, thank you, sir. My mind was just on the answer. And he said, should I tell you honesty? He said, yes. And then he kept quiet and took a deep breath. He said, I will answer you in a story. And then he told me a story. And at the end of it, he said, let me test. I already told you you're intelligent. What kind of people do you think I'll be needing? I said, trustworthy people. He said, that's it. The morale of the story he gave me was that he would pay any amount to have people who are selfless enough. He said, every storekeeper and every foreman he employed cheated him. And 95% of them were Christians. Recommended by pastors. He sincerely told me that the non-believers who have handled that branch of his business have been more honest than even the people. Because of greed. 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 Let them know that the word is working. So you steal everything. You steal cement. You steal everything and sell it and quietly cover it up. Do you not know that when truth was buried, it came out of the grave? Hallelujah. There are very, very... Listen, let me teach you this. If you are a businessman here, please more than value and productivity look for selfless people when you find selfless people you have not found cheap people you have found priceless people our generation is full of everybody who is looking for everything for myself let me quickly cash in on the moment while i have the time some of you looking at me now as born again as you are let me keep you in a room with plenty money scattered. If I count it, you will behave because it's counted. But let me just scatter it and leave you. You will first check whether there's a CCTV, look around, and pray in tongues so that those outside will think there's prayer going on. 
and you just bend as if you are sweeping and carry one and put in your pocket. Who do you think is watching? God alone? Demons. Angels. The demons that will oppress you and you will shout in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Are you joking? Please, I pray for you in the name of Jesus that the grace to be selfless, may that grace come upon you. There are nurses that are not selfless. Is that not so? In your hospital. There are doctors that are not selfless. A woman comes, she wants to give birth and they are acting as if, please madam, if you would die, say, just die there. Whereas that woman has been trusting God for a child for 12 years. And you see the greed and the selflessness. Are you from my tribe? Are you from my place? Are you from here? No. Self. I, these are the things I pray for for myself. These are the things that have brought blessings to my life. That you show God. I told you that the Lord told me, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. There are many of you that desire anointing. Apostle, anoint me. And I look at you, it's not even God, even me I know. The things you will do if that anointing really comes. You will first run to your enemies and say you are finished. You don't know what I'm carrying. Just know it's over. And if you think I'm joking, you, you will die tomorrow. You, you will die on Thursday. By the time you kill people in a row, in one week, you say, what? This grace is powerful. Even me, I didn't know it's this powerful. Listen to my message. Can God trust you? Go and listen to it. Please, media, let our family online and in diaspora listen to that message. Can God trust you? Powerful message. Many times, it is not just in the fasting and the prayer, as powerful as it is. It's positioning yourself. God, let me be your treasurer on earth. The last treasurer betrayed you. Here is a faithful one. And God is saying, can I trust you? Say, yes, trust me. God gives you 500,000. Your spirit is still sound. Your head is still sound. And he sees how you bless people. He'll say, you did this for me. Let me take it to another level. Whereas all your prayer from your small mind is, God, give me five million. Oh God, give me five. Five million will change my life. Based on what your mind told you. Whereas he's thinking of giving you gold as dust. And giving you the keys to the hearts of nations. Lord, give me the grace to prophesy. As soon as God gives you that grace, you just say, I found my stream of income. I'm not wasting my time for anything again. I will never prophesy free. I it didn't, it was not, I got the anointing at a cost. And God says, You see your heart? You were there fasting. I warned you. And now that you have the anointing, and because it is valuable, people will now begin to pay. 100,000 per prophecy, 30,000 per prophecy and the truth is that the grace will work and while you are paying and paying you are happy you are building houses collecting people's houses collecting people's cars and doing all of that god is watching you he's watching you because he knows one day you will exhaust that realm so you'll go back again and say lord i'm here he said it's not me you are talking to it's not me you are talking to i gave you a grace I saw what you did with that grace. Lord, give me the kind of apostle's grace. And he tests you. 20 missed calls by 1 a.m. You don't answer any one of them. The 21st one you call and say, let me tell you something. I'm a human being too. I sleep. I this. I that. I hate you. Don't do this to me again. The next time you do And God says, look at the grace you want. Listen. 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 Please look at me selflessness is an unusual virtue that is the reason why not everybody has it why will you reward everybody when they have the same thing dr mike Murdoch says that our similarities create our comfort it's our difference that creates our reward hallelujah how far can you go for the sake of people how far can you go for the sake of God? Some of you have vehicles. 
you've never carried anybody after service even if it's raining you horn them and say you are going and god is watching and you already say no god i'm trusting you to give me one car that i saw on my way going somewhere and god says you think i'm stupid there are some of you even if it's on a bike or a bicycle you will never help anybody may god never give you anything that you will regret did you hear what i said may god never give you anything that you will say i feel pained that i gave this man this maybe i'll stop here let me just talk about it the third trait you must embrace is humility i have to talk about it our time is gone but spare me two three five minutes humility humility please look at me the bible says love not the world nor the things that are in this world he says if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him then it categorizes the things we can love into three the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh number three is called the pride of life there are many people please listen to me you see ba africa hear me now i'm not just talking to zaria i'm not just talking to nigeria i'm talking to africa listen to me because of our background huh and the way we have suffered and the way people have looked down on us and some of us because of our cultural context please listen to me there is that itch to be celebrated there is that itch that urge to be perceived as great and valuable are we together and there's nothing wrong with that we call it spotlight is the slang we have for it some of you i just mentioned spotlight you're already laughing i mean you just imagine yourself there's nothing wrong with that except for the fact that pride is one thing that will make god fight a man god will not fight a man because of sin god will not fight a man even because of disobedience but pride he says that god gives opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble one of the one of the one of the greatest justification for pride is wealth and achievement please listen wealth and achievement every time god warned people of pride it had to do with wealth and achievement deuteronomy chapter 8 you don't have to turn there just read the bible says let it not be that when you have what built houses and done this the, done this and that achievement that you will say my power and the might of my hand has given me this and then verse 18 says but thou shalt remember the lord thy god for it is he it is he leave the remaining statement it is he he is the focus humility is not refusing what god has done humility is not simplicity humility is acknowledging god as the basis of every achievement that you have outspokenly in your body language and in your conversation god it is unto you apostle joshua selman the great man changing people ah a man can receive nothing precious people except it is given to him from god it's very difficult for some of you to say this thing why because you feel if i say it i'm taking away the spotlight from me pride there are many people there are many parents who would have been lifted but pride pride they will not be good examples look at me let me tell you why some of you are finding it difficult to access the blessings of god to lift you you are not going to be a good model being blessed you are the best christian model at your current state if you rise higher than that especially financially you will kill people some of you if you rise financially your mother your father your siblings and everybody they will kneel down to greet you every morning 
simply because you paid rent simply because you paid this i failed in life and people i think i'm a failure but now that i've succeeded i will rub it on the face of everybody no that is the way of the world we are kingdom people can you be blessed and still remain humble can you be blessed and still stoop down to people's levels can you be blessed and not disturb people with noisy of your achievement <laughs> just to just to meet you and say ah um um just to let you know are you aware that i just came back from lagos and uh i flew in you came that's the most important thing whether you crawled whether you drove whether you flew avoid some of those those talks i was in the plane and ah you know i was uh, i was i don't know have you ever sat down in a business class because i'm trying to explain something i don't know if you can understand you see let me tell this is why many great people are persecuted in the church because we don't know how to keep quiet success is already loud on itself if you dare rub it in members all and sundry will get back at you and they will find a reason to get back at you let me tell you something it is difficult to criticize a humble man even if you are right humility paralyzes you you what will you now say are we together i'm saying this because we are in a very prophetic season where god is lifting many of us many people are not humble they are only broke by the time the blessings of the lord comes you will see the attitude the pungency of pride pride is one thing that is a destroyer even if you kill satan and all the demons proud people will still die there is nothing that gives me beauty and glory as the world shining the light on me then i hold the light and shine it i'm proud to be the usher shining it to say people thank god for joshua selman and everything that's why you notice every time people want to celebrate me for anything i become uncomfortable when i'm preaching i can be bold i can be this if i drop this mic now and you start saying well there is a man here that thing shade was doing you see that i felt like dying if i had my way i would just send my picture to stand and represent me but some of you you like it as joking as it is some of you as you are sitting you are, ah, let my month come if they give me this opportunity i will first cut the cake and leave back the knife let them snap me alone before everybody comes the urge the urge the urge to outshine huh in in a in a secular business way that's all right but in a kingdom way the the urge to want to just receive vain glory please you must trust god to conquer it conquer it conquer it it's one of the big restraints that many of us may face you know many times i pray for you sincerely i do and i ask the lord i say lord continue to bless and lift my people I'm a, among the many things i get impressions of in my spirit is their tendencies god doesn't directly say pride tendencies vulnerabilities things that can happen that you are not aware of if you ever think money does not have power think again did you hear what i said think again money has power put money in a ring with any boxer it will beat him out before he enters money is powerful anything that can turn a man around without using sword is powerful anything that can relocate a man without advice is powerful money is powerful but when it begins to come with it it will solve other problems and create others hallelujah can you let jesus be seen in your life can you be lifted that 10 million naira just entered your account and you still come for koinonia and just sit down not to say if you push me if you push me if you push me please i don't have time for thieves now what happened god has blessed me you're laughing but these are the things that are enshrined in our hearts so that they will know i'm a big man 
so that they will know I'm rich. Well, for your information, that Jeep you are seeing is my car. For your information, just to let you know that uh, I'll be in UK on Tuesday, quickly touch the US Thursday, and uh, I'll try to make coin on you. I'm still coming. God is watching all those things. It's not a testimony you are sharing. There are many things that are not testimonies. Testimonies, the goal of testimonies is edification, not announcement, edification. So the part you stress in a testimony is the edification. Truly, let me tell you something. I vowed a vow to God. And I said, Lord, whatever you will give me that will make me proud, I'm praying in advance, no matter how I cry, don't answer me. Don't answer me. Humility is a powerful thing. Can you have access and still be humble? Can you have increase and still stay humble? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't say we are like that in our family. It means all of you need to hear this message. It doesn't mean you are right just because everybody is like that. We are like that. If we have it, we show it. If we don't have it, we don't show it. But it ought not to be so. Jesus is teaching. When you come into the kingdom, you don't come with the baggages of your belief. You drop it aside and adopt the value system of the kingdom. There is nothing as powerful as being blessed and being humble. Your life is a message in action. In action. And it's amazing that many people what you call wealth is not wealth it's just a test 1.5 and people are in trouble 1.5 entered my account i have 1.5 million oh well now it has gone back to 1.4 i use hundred thousand and while you are talking you may believe you are impressing everybody whereas scattered among you there are accounts that if you see you will not wake up again you will not wake up I'm telling you, it's not the you. There are some things you act like you are used to seeing. No, there are things you are not used to seeing. You will see things that you will not know what part of your body to react with. And yet, people can have those things and be quiet. Moses had the ability to prophesy from morning till night. The grace of the prophetic was so much in him, yet Moses was quiet. Part of his spirit was taken out. They called elders who had followed him. 70 people received the spirit of Moses. Nobody could keep quiet. Ah, I thus hear the Lord from morning till night. And Moses was watching them. Moses said, this thing that is making you make noise, times 10 of it is what was in me, yet I was quiet. Can you have so much and be quiet? Can you know so much and be quiet? There are people, if you know so much, when someone is talking once, is wrong. Let me correct you, sorry. That's what I studied. No, no, that's my field. I won't keep quiet. It is powerful to know so much. There are times that I listen to people as they talk. And many times what they are saying doesn't make a lot of sense. Spiritually and even intellectually. I know a lot more than what they are saying. But I honor them because they have more results than me. I keep quiet and I just hear. You understand what I'm saying? I say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And what the man is saying is, is, is quite honestly nonsense. And I just keep quiet and I listen. He say, ah. And sometimes they are, they are flattered. They are impressed because of the whole thing. Just listen and say, yes, sir. And keep quiet. Not, sir. With all due respect, I don't want to talk while we're just keeping quiet. But, Sakai, this your thing is outdated. No. You lose many opportunities like that. In the name of Jesus, may this ministry even with the things that God is doing, bring people who are exceptionally blessed and humbled. That a time will come when people will pack cars that if you want to see it, you only come for koinonia and you will not even know who is who. People will just be rolling, rolling on the ground. It's after the grace. You will just see a tiny lady say, let me rush home. You think she's calling a bike man and she will enter a car that was your dream that you plan to buy in 30 years. And you say, that's the owner. I said, that's the owner. That lady is a CEO of something. He said, was she not the one rolling up and down? That's a message. Koinonia extended. Extended through your life. Oh,
brag around and move around making noise. I have this. I have that. Listen, when you are under pressure to keep saying things, it's a sign that you have complex yourself. You must be healed, be strengthened. When God blesses you, you cannot hide light. We are going to pray. Our time is up, but we must take two or three minutes to pray. More than having things, these are the things you must become. And your life becomes exceptional. Lord, take away my tendencies. Take away my vulnerabilities. Take away the things that can happen to me when I rise to certain levels. I desire you to take me to certain levels of blessings. But Lord, I know that there are things that are enshrined within my heart that will, will limit your workings in my life. If someone praying tonight, lift your voice and pray. Tonight's teaching may be a hard teaching, but pray is a maker of great people. Pray. I owe everything to you, O oh God. All that I am and all that I will ever become, let it be unto you. Let the name of Jesus alone be glorified. Alone be glorified. When men see me, may they see you. May men not look at me and forget about you. May men not look at my results and ignore Jesus. That when men see my life, it will remind them of who God is. Is someone praying tonight? hallelujah the last prayer point because of our time please i want you to pray this with all your heart pray and say lord don't restrain your hand from me i am trustworthy you can trust me with the wealth of the kingdom you can trust me with access you can trust me with influence i will not bring your name i will not bring reproach to your name through the pungency of pride that will come out i will let men know no matter how you lift me i will let men know that jesus is the reason for who and what i am unashamedly consistently intentionally but lord do not withhold your hand of blessings in this season you are lifting men lift me do not withhold new wines from coming upon my life Pray for yourself. Pray for Koinonia. Let it please you, oh God, to trust me with everything you are pouring in this season. Wisdom, grace, lifting, anointings, access, everything. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In one minute, please hold the hands of somebody close to you. We are going to pray for Koinonia as a ministry. Lord, as you lift us, you are giving us a voice across this nation. You are giving us a voice. Many of you have seen the mighty things that God is doing in and through this ministry. God has made our song a praise to the nations. And God has so exalted himself. I'd like you to pray pray and say Lord as you lift us we declare that never will there come a time in this ministry where men will see your walkings and forget about Jesus lift your voice you love this ministry pray pray online continue the lifting oh God let the teachings continue to transform men let it enter the hands of people we declare it's a vow and a covenant that Jesus and him alone will be glorified as you announce us, as you lift us, as you honor us, in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare. Pray for everyone connected to this ministry. Pray for every business. Pray for every career. Pray for every achievement and every achiever. Pray for every business person. Pray for every ministry connected to this ministry. Pray for our children. Father, we declare 
that in this season that you are announcing and lifting men Jesus alone will be glorified I pray for you that the things that I share tonight will mean a lot to you. If it is lifting in the kingdom you truly desire, please, when these messages are uploaded, get them again and sit down. Don't say they are simple. These are the weightier matters of the kingdom. You settle down and listen and pray personally. This prayer point, you should go back to your secret place and develop it and cry and say, Lord, help me. I have defaulted in this area and that area. It may be why you're outstretched and you started, but something restrained your hand. Now I know it's not just demons. Let the heavens be open. Pour out increase. Pour out influence. I told God as far as my life is concerned, please don't have any fear blessing me. Don't have any restraint blessing me. Because for as long as I'm alive breathing, I will ensure that in and through my life, that Jesus is glorified you must adopt that you come from families that like to know who is doing what so that you earn respect you must kill that spirit don't say I'm Yoruba don't say I'm Igbo don't say I'm South South don't say I'm Hausa don't say I'm Middle Belt throw away those things and say I'm a citizen of the kingdom and I must subscribe to the way that kingdom people behave they say this is what you should do but I say, this is Jesus teaching. They say, this is what you should do. But I say, this is the way. Father, I stand representing this ministry and representing the things that you are doing even in this nation and around the world. I know that in this season, you are truly looking for men you can trust. And Lord, you have put it in my heart as a burden to teach your people. The spiritual traits that we must inculcate that position us to be lifted in our places of work in ministry in business in career and even in destiny I have shared some of these truths with your people and I cry by the God of heaven that you will cause this word to be effectual in our hearts whatever it is that our lives have projected that have made you restrain your hand of blessing your hand of lifting your hand of honor we pray tonight by the mercies of the god of heaven let your hand be outstretched once again to lift to bless to anoint and to take us to realms unimagined in the name of jesus i pray specifically over the issue of finances we're in a season where so many people need the hand of god in this area I've told you it's a cost to chase money, look for money. It will distract you and take away useful time from your life. I pray that any of these things that you have assumed in your heart that will make God to restrain his hand to bless you or bless your family by the mercies of the God of heaven, may mercy be shown you this night. In the name of Jesus. And I pray for you sincerely and truthfully may you step into blessings and into realms you never even imagined you will step into may you step into anointings may you step into access may you step into honor may you step into influence may you step into open doors in the name of jesus christ i declare may kings entreat your favor in the name of jesus that even the blessed will call you blessed the anointed will call you anointed. In the name of Jesus Christ, everything that represents shame and reproach in your life and in your family, I stand right now in the name of Jesus and I declare that it leaves your life like smoke before the wind. Whatever God has given you that is becoming a curse in your life right now, I interject with the mercy of God. And I pray that nothing God has given you will be to your heart. Nothing God has given you will be to the heart of those around you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. 
subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline 